Hey everyone, it's Joy here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing a super fun, non-traditional colored Halloween card with newer products from Pretty Pink Posh. I can't, I think they were released last month if I remember. I don't remember for sure, but they're pretty, pretty new. So we're gonna make a uh, shaker card today using the cauldron. So we've got the cauldron shaker die, the candy treats die, and the layered candy corn stencil. So that's what we're gonna be using today. So I'm gonna die cut my candies from white cardstock because I want to do Copic coloring. So my color scheme for this whole card is pink, black, and white. So that's why I'm gonna keep it in. We're gonna stencil the candy corns in that color and yeah, we're gonna color all the candies with Copic markers. So also we will be doing some stamping on acetate, so hang on to the end to see that. And yeah, let's get started on this coloring. So I picked out the candies that I wanna use and I'm just gonna start coloring. I like to use the C colors, like C4, 6, and 8, if I want a black color. Um, and then I've got my pink, uh, I believe it's R81, 83, and 85. And then for the white, I just use like C1 or C2 and a blender pen. I'm using C1. And a blender pen just to kind of soften it if it gets a little too dark. Because I don't want to leave my cardstock white for the white, I wanna add a little bit of shadow with a really light gray marker. So here's my pink markers that I'm using. I wanted to keep this simple in a way with this really simple color scheme, but it's also kind of a classic color scheme. Um, and I think it's super fun for Halloween. So like I said, these are newer products from Pretty Pink Posh. I've had them for a little bit and I'm so glad that I got to use them. I'm in love with the cauldron shaker die. I think it is so, so fun. I don't think you have to make a shaker with it. You could just adhere it um, without making a shaker, but of course, I of course I made a shaker because I love shakers and I think they are so much fun. But look at how this fun this candy is turning out. It is the pink and black and white, I just think is so fun. And there's layering pieces, so the you have a bottom piece and then you have a top piece that you can layer together. So like the back piece is gonna be the complete shape and including like the ends of the candy um, that I'm coloring right here. And then the other piece you can just layer on top. So I'm just getting all of those colored. I want this little striped candy to be striped with all three colors. And I'm just following along the little stitched lines that are on this piece of candy. And there's quite a bit more pieces of candy. I think there is a, a, a gummy bear. There's like a gumdrop. Um, oh gosh, I can't think of the other ones. But there's quite a few uh, more little pieces of candy. So lots of fun. I did die cut some candy corn because I wanted it to go with the candy corn stencil background that we're going to create. So here I'm just making the little stripes with the black, white, and pink. This, there's two of these candies, there's two suckers, there's two of those oval candies, two of the candy corns, and then one of those striped candies. So, and I decided just to keep a lot of this Copic coloring in because usually I think I tend to make it go a lot faster and then cut it out, but that's a lot of this card. So I thought I might as well just keep it in and show you guys. I like this pink combo as well. I think it's a fun, bright, almost like bubblegum pink. Um, I think you could do this color scheme with a lighter pink and gray and white, and that would be like a softer pastel, and I think that could be a really cute color combo. And then of course, obviously like the traditional color combos. Okay, now let's get these guys adhered. So I'm just gonna bring in a little, my, a little bit of my liquid glue and my crystal katana and just put these into place and you can see how cute these candies are gonna turn out to be. Make sure I get all my little edges lined up perfectly. So I'm just gonna add this to the back because I wanted the little ends of the candy to be white on that one since the inside was pink and black. And then I can adhere my sucker pieces together. Sorry, I needed to adjust my camera. <laughs> the only way to do it is to manhandle it. And then I've got this fun little black swirl. I think this was one of my favorite candies on here that I can adhere together. And then this one has a fun little kind of flowery, flowery, flowery edge. 
That was a hard word to say. Um, like a little scalloped edge, I guess is what I mean to say. And then again, there's two of these candies and I couldn't quite figure out how to line these guys up. So hopefully I did it correctly, but we're gonna get that finished. Now I am going to die cut this fun cauldron from some Onyx cardstock and it's kind of a black shiny cardstock, which I thought was perfect for the cauldron. I am gonna die cut this five times because I want to glue all of them together to give dimension for the shaker card. Now I added a lot of stuff to my shaker, so I probably should have cut like two more pieces to make it a little bit thicker. So five of those and I will adhere those together. Okay, so on a piece of like light gray cardstock, I'm going to do the stenciling with the layered candy corn stencil. There's three layers to this. I am starting with Kitsch Flamingo Distress Oxide ink. Then I will use black soot for the middle piece. And then I'm gonna use the Hero Hues Unicorn ink for the white. So that's why I decided to bring in a gray background because we needed to see the white of the candy corn. And it would have looked funny if I had just done that on a white um, cardstock. So that is why I have a gray background. But look at how cute that is. I love how this is coming together. And I just want to give a shout out to Waffle Flower. That little um, rectangle, um, oh my gosh, ink pad holder. They sent to me as a gift. They sent me a few other things as a gift um, that I'll be sharing with you guys. And I know that other people have these, rect you know, these ink holders. This is my first one and I love it. So anyways, I put my ink on my surface because I don't want to contaminate my white ink pad and I'm picking it up off the surface with my little small blender brush. Okay, so I adhered four of my cauldrons together and I totally forgot to record all of this for you guys but I have a piece of my acetate and I'm going to adhere one of the pieces of the cauldron to that with some liquid glue and then just trim around it to trim the excess off so that way this piece will be the front to our shaker card and behind it will be four other pieces of the cauldron glued together for dimension. Now I'm gonna use Honeybee Stamps Scalloped A2 Frames to die cut a piece of regular black cardstock. And this is going to be behind our cauldron because that background was so busy that we wouldn't be able to see the candy. So I'm gonna pop, up, uh, pop this up with some like low profile foam tape. And you're gonna see the difference between the two pieces of black cardstock. So that's a regular black. And then this one is like that, it's kind of a shiny black. So this is the Onyx. So that is all four of the cauldrons glued together and I'm going to adhere this to the background and I still will pop in the background piece of the cauldron because again, it's two different colors of black and I just wanna keep that cohesion together. So once this is all adhered down, I realized I needed to lift the top up a little bit and not have it completely adhered down so I could just tuck in ever so gently some of the candy pieces. Okay, I popped in that centerpiece and I'm gonna use Trinity Stamps Oh My Stars, these are silver, and then they have a bone collection, uh, like the little clay bones, and so I put some of those in. And I kept putting more stars in, which I think was my mistake, because it doesn't shake as well as I would like. So I should have put in less stars or added more um, layers to my cauldron. Now this is the piece that has the acetate behind it. See, this is where I should not have added more stars. <laughs> but they were so cute, and I just thought this would be such a cute, cute shaker. I'm gonna add a little bit of liquid glue. Be careful not to add too much because you don't want it to squeeze out onto your acetate because that's not cute. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure that's nice and adhered down, but then the shakes, and you have such cute little bones and fun sparkly stars, it feels so witchy to me. But then we're gonna tuck in all this fun Halloween candy. So let's get going on that. So I'm just gonna add some liquid glue behind it. And I'm gonna start placing my back pieces first, even if they are popped up with some foam tape. I want kind of the things that I know for the most part are gonna be in the back and also the bigger pieces I want to start start with. So you wanna start with your bigger pieces from the back and kind of move forward. And I'm just finding out what looks good and where. I had to trim some of the candy pieces down so they could be you know, a smaller profile and they wouldn't cover up certain other pieces of candy. But look at how cute that is. 
And this is why I needed to add that black background because this laid against that stenciled background. It just, you just lost all of the detail of these candy pieces. So that's why I did it. I could have also done a gray background. So if you don't want the black cauldron on a black background, do another piece of gray or even do a piece of vellum because that's going to obscure the background some and then you can really still focus on the shaker part and the candy pieces. So I'm just using my reverse tweezers to also help me, you know, tuck kind of get everything tucked in there. Okay, time for some white gel pen highlights. You guys know I love this. It adds so much detail to your images and images like this, it makes them look shiny. So that's a lot of fun too. So I'm just going to add a few of those details around. And then I decided to bring in more of those Trinity stamps, Oh My Stars, just to the background and on top of the candy and a couple on the cauldron because I just thought that kind of brightened up the background and brought some of the shaker bits up and out. So I'm gonna just put those in place. Once I get them nice and lined up where I want them, then I can add them with a little bit of liquid glue. I'm also going to adhere this to a white A2 size card base. I did think about trimming, uh, trimming down that background panel, but I opted to not do that because I just really love all that candy. I think it's so, so fun, all of those candy corns. So I'm just gonna add my glue behind all of these little stars. And these stars, you guys, are so shiny. They're almost like a mirror. That's what it looks like. It's so, so pretty. Okay, now I totally forgot to stamp my sentiment. So this is where I'm talking about stamping on the acetate. I'm doing it after the fact. This says trick or treat, and this is from Mama Elephant's Happy Haunting stamp set. And I'm gonna use cotton white. I think that's what it's called, stays on ink because that stays on your plastic. So ideally, before I adhered my acetate piece down, I would have stamped it with this. I just completely forgot that I was gonna put a sentiment on this card. But it's kind of hard to see right now with the shaker bits, but up close you can see how cute that is. And then you have your little bones and your stars shaking in there. I totally am in love with this card. So thank you guys so very much for stopping by and watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope that you feel inspired and have a wonderful day. I'll be back soon with another video. Bye.